Today's tutorial will be on international econ international trade. Now, in our previous tutorial, we are starting or studying the factor price equalization theorem. We have already talked about the pre and the post tra uh, trade situation. However, there can be a very simple or if I want to give a name to this explanation, then I'll name it as a common sense explanation. So yes, it will be an easiest one. Common sense explanation with regard to, uh, the, that means an approach that can easily describe this theorem very well. Okay. So I wanted to share this with you and that's why we will do this video. So let's get started. So, we will start with a situation as we already do, always do. So, before trade. So, say, before trade, the situation is something like this. Capital is cheap. And this is in country 1. And labor is cheap. Okay. Cheap in country 2. Therefore, what happens is that country 1 has a comparative advantage in capital intensive good. And if you are familiar with the previous tutorial discussion that you know that we have taken into consideration two goods. One good was marked as A and the other as B. And B is nothing but our capital intensive good. So it is, it has comparative advantage in production of B. While country 2 has a comparative advantage in labor intensive good which we have been mark marking as A. So, labor intensive good, that is our A. Now, let us change a little bit of color so it looks good. Now, when, so this is the structure that is there before trade. Okay, so there is barrier. You cannot trade between the countries. Trade is not possible. And this is the situation. Now, let us look at the situation when we remove the barrier. So, when the two countries participate in trade, let's see what happens. Country 1 will export good B while our country the other country that is country number two will export good a now to increase the production of good b country one must and must so country one must move it factors of production so factors of production from industry a to industry b so to produce more of good b the producers in the country one need more capital therefore the price of capital is bid up bid up means so it actually increases Climbs up. Okay. Now, when this happens, the relative price
or what was cheap factor before trade actually rises similarly the producers in country 2 start to produce more of good a in order to export it and this is nothing but a labor intensive good at has as discussed earlier so as more of it is produced more labor will be required so more labor is needed and the relative price of labor goes up hence trade what it is doing is it leads to an increase in both countries the price of scarce factor no the price of abundant factor like the relative cheap the relatively cheap factor until factor prices are the same in both the countries now the question is so if you remember the figure that we did last time which is this one are we always be able to find the trade points such as t and t dash as we can see in this particular figure the answer to this particular question is not necessarily the alternative is that okay not necessarily the alternative is that one of the countries or let me simplify it further it may happen possibly both might be completely specialized and produce only one good and if this is the case then the model itself break down so the more so more the factor endowment in two countries will differ the larger is the probability that one country will be completely specialized and that the complete factor equalization which is what we are doing now factor price equalization may not or will not occur now before winding up today's tutorial i must post a question in front of you now so we have seen there can be complete or there can be partial factor price equalization and there are different opinion with uh, of trade theorists with regard to this and before winding up i must tell you the view of the classical trade theory so the classical trade theory always took it for granted that free mobility of factors of production between the different regions would tend to equalize the relative as well as the absolute price 
or prices of productive services in different region thus and an example has also been posted migration of labor that is from the crowded europe to the less crowded america would result in drop in american wages america's wage rate let me tell you relative to america's land rates okay land rents and relative to commodities and at the same time european land rates would fall and european real wage would rise so migration of labor would cease only when this absolute and relative factors have been finally been equalized now the main thing here is that we are always talking about going and going talking about the tendency towards factor price equalization and why it shouldn't be equalization be it can happen that it can be partial can be the word or incomplete and not complete should be used so in our next tutorial we'll talk about why should be equalization be only partial and incomplete